My name's Michael Sreenan. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based in Redcar. Um, I used to, until pandemic happened, do a lot of portrait photography, um, kind of based in fashion, stuff like that. I had work published in Vogue Italia. I film on GQ Arabia and a few other like French magazines that sound ridiculous when I sit in my Yorkshire accent, so I won't even try. Um, but yeah, since like sort of last year, I've started to move a lot more into documentary photography as well and kind of expanding that practice as well as portrait stuff. What I would call a proper photographer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the, yeah. the thinking behind it as well. Have you ever thought about calling yourself a digital creative? I see a lot of people going down that route now, just to say oh. that they do photos and video. No, oh. I just, what, whoever I talk to, whatever I'm talking about, I am either a photographer or a filmmaker. Yeah. They kind of go hand in hand, but I don't want to be like, I'm just jack of all trades. It is like... Yeah, I love like like filmmakers. Like my like when people say filmmaker, I'm always like, oh cool. Like you know, that's like, like I like that because I know I know what that means now. It pertains to like a certain sort of aesthetic when it comes out, uh, quality wise and everything. Um, we were, we were like kind of had that beat in us at one point in my old job, and uh, it's kind of stuck with me. When I do like that. Oh, was it Ithaca? Where they they don't like vid uh, videographer, do they? No, I videograph. Think <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always weird because you got like people and I just don't understand what that is. Someone once asked me, I think it was an insurance person, is that an actual real job? And I was like, yeah. Should try being a promoter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not just insurance companies that ask if it's a real job. <laughs> Dinner table. Um, how did it start then? How did you first get involved within, um, with, with a camera, essentially? Um, it's basically always been there. Um, ever since I was little. It's only kind of recently that I've been kind of thinking about where it did start. Um, but I would say it would go back to starting in bands. I was always also had a camera. I always always made like daft videos, did photos with the bands and stuff like that. So it has always been there for well, well over 10 years now because I'm getting old, unfortunately. Um, but then I went to do music technology at college and university. And there was like an introduction to photo and video, um, but it was like very, very slight. Um, so from there, it kind of just kept growing and growing. I kept doing things and the more I did things, the more people took notice and asked me to do some more. And it just kept rolling and rolling from there. And that's where I got to until last year and then it all just stops <laughs> yeah do you feel, yeah that, I mean this is kind of the whole like premises of this isn't it we'll get there we'll get to that bit yeah. but uh um inspirations and do you have like any main inspiration when it comes to photos and video yeah so the all kind of I was going to separate it as like photos and videos but then the more I thought about it they all link together they all you know either influence each other um, or kind of come out in my work either way, whether it's video or photo. The main people would be Sal Leiter, who's a New York street photographer, um, Peter Lindbergh, who's a portrait photographer, a guy called, I'm going to say it wrong, Cayetano Gonzalez, who's a DOP and photographer. Um, he's, like, amazing. He's, like... A bit more contemporary and he's yeah it's cool and stuff recently is like fred herzog which is more like street based stuff fred herzog shot his hometown for like 50 years and local camera clubs and stuff would show his work and then it got to like the early 2000s and then they could actually print his work properly and then he became like world famous because he had like 50 years of all this amazing work and that this year has kind of really hit me as being like when he was taking those photos it wasn't like a cool old Cadillac it was just a car in the street but now that is totally like a brand new well like, yeah it's just 
Yeah, so what we we see now and we think is like normal. Yeah. Is going to be old at one point. Like, yeah. like a, if you see like a micro now, you're not going to be like, oh, it's a cool photo. But in 25 years' time, when it's all electric cars or something like that, you'll be like, oh, this is mad looking. I think when you look at old photos and everything looks like point and shoot, like, like nothing's like, like it, it's all composed well and everything's like looks aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. But like you could tell that somebody actually stood and took the image. Like it was like a like a spend moment. Like I'm gonna take a picture of this person riding past this person walking and stuff. It's like I, I like that kind of aesthetic to it because I instantaneously pick up a camera and go straight to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. straight high. Yeah, you got to find them angles. It's always about yeah. knowing where to stand. Isn't it? You know, find where to stand. But then that thing happens in front of you, and it's with all those sort of photographers, it's a case of that snap moment that will never happen again. And that's, it's, it's there, it's come up. Being in the right place, right time, but just yeah. constantly doing it. Um, learning wise then, you were music tech and whatnot and you were a musician for years, but with the with the camera stuff and that, were you learning that on the side? Or yeah. was it formal training? So it was taught, I would say totally self-taught. Like I said, we did one module at college, which was like one hour every two weeks. I think I picked up a camera, shot a roll, developed it, and that was my whole course. Like past, done. But so that's not really formal training. Yeah. Um, so yeah, from there it was just learning by myself. And I've always done that and I continue to do that every single day. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? I've always thought of self-taught as like everyone's self-taught because you have to teach yourself, but like, it's weird. It's like almost like saying, like, do you pay for like lessons? But I guess if you paid for online lessons, that would still be self-taught. Yeah, because you're going out to do that to yourself. So yeah, yeah. I do. I still do lessons, especially like this last year. I've done, I can't even, loads of courses. At least five or six courses. Read five or six books. Bought countless amounts of photo books. I mean, I just never stop. Yeah, this is why you're as good as you are. <laughs> um, do, do you generally work alone or do you collaborate with others? I used to always work with someone. So it would be a portrait or it would be part of a video. So it would always be with a little team of either makeup artists, stylists or stuff like that. At the moment, it's obviously alone um, as much as possible. But yeah. Generally, to actually take the photos, or it's just me. I don't have yeah. this, unfortunately. No, that, that's cool. Um, it's part of the practice, isn't it, essentially? Yeah. Because um, everybody else there is working alone, but like also as a collective. Yeah, it is a group effort, but it's, it's kind of like everyone's bringing their own unique personal one piece to it, aren't they? So... Sounds, like, sounds like everything. Sounds like music and everything. It just works, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Big question then, why do you think the creative arts are important? And you can talk about this personally, or you can talk about this just in a more general sense, you know, like populace. Yeah, so it kind of, for me, I was thinking about this and it kind of links into both general and for me personally. And I always, people always ask me how I do portrait work and stuff that I do on the side, as well as work stuff, like commercial work and weddings and whatever makes me money. And I always say it fills up the creative tank. Like I, the more I do, it just keeps me filled up with being more creative, do more things. And that gives me personal creative fulfillment. And I think that is the key for any sort of arts, someone just playing guitar, someone doing a painting, whatever, that creative fulfillment is, I don't know, a key to life for me, to be honest. To say, what do you think about the other side of it then? People experiencing your work and whatnot? I try not to think about that. <laughs> yeah, is it correct? If that's like the process itself is the fulfillment and then it's there, whatever happens to it happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I am trying to think a bit more about that now. Um, try to put projects together where it's more um, a cohesive piece of work. So, not just one photo on Instagram, maybe a book or a show or something like that. A bit more like, as you do as a band, you put an EP together or you put an album together. I want to start creating something like that. So it's a body of work and it's delivered as one. Yeah, no, I get that as well, yeah. And I think 
what I'd like that from that is kind of the reader or viewer or whatever, just to take it as well, however they want, to be honest. That's that, um, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, that, that's art, isn't it? I always like the thing about feeling something. Like, as long as I feel something, it's not like a nothingness, but unless the nothingness is, pers- per- like, purposeful. But, yeah. like, you know, like, like the tips, even just an interest in something is enough. Like, someone clicking play on Spotify for a band I'm in, it's, like, yeah. uh, 10 seconds of it. Like, that's enough. Like, you know, you've entertained the play button, at least. Yeah, I, I try not to think about it too much because the way we share work now online, um, I just try to share it and... I found a lot of the time people don't click like, people don't comment saying, I love your work. But then when I see people in the street, they'll say, oh, I see what you're doing. It's really cool. I really like what you're doing. So I'm just like, well, I'm not going to judge anything on feedback. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. It's called a real life metric. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, everything's a vanity metric unless it's too like two faced. Yeah. Uh, uh, how has lockdown affected your work and your future plans? Um, so it totally cut me off, I'm not going to lie, it just financially, personally, work-wise, I was just stopped completely. Um, but then that's given me time to reflect, time to think about what I'm doing, um, time to think about what I want to do in the future. Um, and then I've explored Red Car more than I ever thought I would. Even though I know every corner of Red Car, I think just documenting those little corners has been really nice. Um, so, yeah, just give me a bit of reflection on what I'm doing. And I think from that, it's allowed me to build up projects for the future once I'm actually allowed to play out again. Yeah, because you've been learning as well, haven't you, I guess? Well, yeah. I mean, you constantly learn, but in that sense or at least you're still doing in that sense like I, I liked your region uh stuff when that was getting knocked down you managed to capture that just as it was happening it's yeah there's those little things because i think red cars changing so much you just walk up and down there and everything changes like daily the skate park's gone this week and then you like walk past, past and the cinema's going and then all the buildings are getting re generated into cladded monstrosities but hey, if it wasn't for photographers you wouldn't know stuff like that i guess yeah. like in that sense because like so outside me there's like there's like a car park like people park the cars under it and th- that went like and the person who was in charge of doing that in the area he was at my house of in um my ceiling's fallen down and he was he was like uh Oh, you, you noticed the car parts going outside, and I was just like, "Is it went outside? It was gone." I was like, "When did you do that? You went this morning." I was just like, "What? Like, what? Yeah. Well, don't we get told about stuff like that?" It's like, but like on a bigger scale, your towns and your cities and stuff, like your villages, they're all they'll change you unless you live next to something. You're probably not going to ever know that that's happening until yeah. it happens. It's just gone. I got reminded. Like I've seen that a few documentary photographers that had shared like ten years ago photos of the cinema photos of the old library in Red Car and there was like this brutalist metal building that was like super cool and we used to go there as kids and that's totally gone and like yeah. don't let them know that was there really it's, not, it's just it's weird it's kind of there one day gone so oh, it's weird like the, the, the like do you mean to think that there, there was at some point no peer like you know kind yeah. of thing I know we've got a vertical one which is contentious but like it, it's the fact that, like, you know, there just wasn't one, like, for ages. It was just Leo's. This used to be like a big, ugly nightclub that was amazing. And now I feel like it just looks like the replaced Leo's because they put the bar in the bottom. <laughs> it just looks like a new version. Oh, class. Oh, thanks for your time, Mike. No, it's been good. I wish we could talk longer, but uh, the interview has to come to an end. It's good. Thanks very much.